In today's video, Nikki has a tantrum, we get romantic, we dance, we get vaccinated and Sky comes home. My name is Nikki, I'm an English makeup artist and I live with Carlo and our daughter Sky in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road but surrounded by fruit trees and olive groves and we grow our own food. We'll show you what it's really like to live on the Amalfi Coast. Subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. This week's video has a lot of abrupt beginnings and abrupt endings because either I wasn't planning on filming and something came up that I had to film or I was filming and then something happened that made me not want to film or I basically forgot that I was filming. <laughs> so I'm going to sit here in the garden, we're going to have a wander around the garden and I'm going to talk you through the video day by day just so that you understand what the hell's going on. Anyhow, let's get into it. Let's have a look at the beautiful garden at the moment because it's at its best. All the climbing roses are out, the hydrangeas are out and it is looking beautiful. These beautiful climbing roses are out at the moment in full bloom and I absolutely love them. They appear in the first week of June and unfortunately they're mostly above the pergola so it looks amazing from above. Now we are undecided as to whether these are just classic tea roses or whether they are seven sisters. Whatever they are though, they are beautiful. And down towards the gate all of our hydrangeas are coming out. Now last year we didn't get any flowers off of these and I was a bit worried that they weren't gonna do anything anymore but look at that, absolutely beautiful. They're back. There's two different colours. There's the pinker pink and the purpley pink. So basically last week Carlo and I decided to go for an afternoon walk on the beach and we weren't planning on filming anything because we were just going to have a wander around, maybe get an ice cream, say hello to Elizabeth and Pepe and congratulate them for starting up the season with the boat company again. But as soon as we got down, Pepe sent us off to the jetty saying, Elizabeth's just leaving with the boat, quick, run, 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 and maybe you can get on board as well. So we went running down to the jetty and they turned the boat round and came back and picked us up and suddenly we were having an afternoon sunset cruise along the Amalfi Coast. As you do, this is what happened. Surprise happening here. Me and Carlo were going for a walk on the beach and suddenly we got called and we were told to get ourselves onto the jetty as quick as we can because Elizabeth's first boat is here and look who's driving. <laughs>
next day I had to go and get my vaccine done. I got the J&J &J vaccine and I went down to the vaccination centre in Positano and got vaccinated with all of the Blue Star crew. So Nicola was there, Mariana was there, Elizabeth had already been done and it was a bit of a party atmosphere there. It was a fun morning but I got the full after effects from the vaccine. I felt awful later on that day. I had about four hours worth of chills and um, I didn't get a fever but I was I was shaking. I was so cold and I put my pyjamas on and I put a cashmere jumper on and I put my dressing gown on and I went under the covers and I put the electric blanket on and I was still cold and I had a pretty rough night and I also had a stomach virus which has been going around doing the rounds in town uh, in the last week or so and I got that at the same time so I was knocked out for about three days. It is ten past nine in the morning. I am on my way out hopefully to get my vaccine. They're doing an open day until supplies run out and it starts at 11 and I reckon there's going to be um, a lot of people there. So I'm going to go down and try because if I can't get it today, it means that in three days time I have to drive to the hospital, which is just before Ravello and get it done there. And I'd much rather just get it done here. So I'm going to head down there now. Holly, unfortunately, is going to have to stay at home with Luca today and with the kitties because I don't think she'll be welcome in a vaccine room. <laughs> and the vaccination centre is just over there. Let's go and see how many people are waiting. So it's not too bad at all. We have to go over there and hand in our health card so that they know that we're here and they will call us once it's our turn. So everybody's just hanging around outside. Mariana should be here soon and Erin so we can stand around together and have a chat. And look who I found, he's also waiting. Hello. 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 Done the first hurdle, filled out all the forms, and now we wait because the vaccines have not arrived yet. So we're going to sit here and wait. Definitely more and more people arriving. The nice thing is, it's a bit of a party atmosphere because, being such a small town, everybody knows everybody. So everybody's just having a good old chat and uh, making me laugh as uh, Nicola and his friends. And I'm sitting under the umbrella here because it's quite hot and sunny and they're all going through each other's little bags. So what's in my bag? <laughs> Covid style. Nicola's mum's turned up. The vaccines have arrived now so we should be moving pretty fast fairly soon. It is now quarter to twelve. <laughs> All done. Carlo had his done on Saturday. He had the first dose of the, he doesn't remember actually, AstraZeneca probably. And I've had the Janssen, so that's one no, no. shot, all done. Now I'm going back up to get my scooter and Carlo has asked me to wait and pick him up. He finishes work in 15 minutes. So I am gonna find something to do with myself for 15 minutes. Ciao. <laughs> That was Stefano and Valentina from the last video. <laughs> um, that's the thing about Positano, it is a very small town and everybody knows everybody. So you've always got somebody to talk to and somebody to waste time with, which is exactly what I'm going to go and do now, somewhere with someone. A couple of days, are we recording? Yeah. A couple of days after I felt better, I had to go to Salerno to pick up a official document. After Brexit, any British residents in Italy now have to carry with them what is called a carta di soggiorno. Most foreign residents that aren't European have to have a permesso di soggiorno, which is a permission to stay in the country. But for these British residents that are not European anymore, but have been for the last 20 odd years or so, they now have to have this carta di soggiorno. And I applied for mine back in March and it was ready to pick up. It's actually been ready for the last few weeks, but I just haven't got around to getting it. 
So Carlo and I drove over to Salerno and we started making a video and I never finished making the video because I didn't have a very good experience in the office. The woman that I had to deal with was extremely rude. She would not speak to me. She was all about the hand gestures um, and treated me as if I had no language skills and no social skills at all. And it was very humiliating. And at one point I said to her, I speak Italian perfectly well, why don't you tell me what you want me to do instead of gesturing at me? And she glared at me and it continued to ignore me and slammed my document down on the counter. And so I picked it up and walked away. And as I walked away, she yelled at me through the office um, and I yelled back at her and I stormed out of there as you can see by the very end of what we filmed. After that, I did not feel like filming anymore and we didn't. When you're angry, it's really hard to film stuff and continue to show people what's happening. And I was so upset at the way I'd been treated, I just did not film anything for the rest of that day. So Come to Cetara today. We're actually on our way to Salerno because I need to pick up some official documents from the Questura, which is the what is it, La Questura in English? The police headquarters, I don't something know. like that. Um, and we thought we would drive along the coast and then come to Cetara for lunch and then carry on to Salerno. So here we are, and it's lovely and summery. This is probably the first time I've ever been here in the summer. I always come in the winter. Sì, sono d'accordo con tutto, tranne che non ho fatto il mio saluto. Hello, everywhere. If you remember, I came here with Elizabeth a few months ago and it was very, very wintry and very, very different. There was all the fishermen on the beach doing the nets. And now it has been made into summer beach mode. And we've just got to find somewhere for lunch. Ho ordinato le melanzane con la cioccolata. Per, uh, per il popolo non italiano, le melanzane sono aubergines. Eggplant. Eggplant. Allora per i francesi sono aubergines, giusto? Francesi e inglesi dicono aubergine e americani dicono eggplant. Eggplant, ok. Here. Melanzane con la cioccolata. Mai mangiate. Sono buone. Sì. Davvero. Sitting outside the Questura di Salerno, I have to pick up this document which is a newly invented official document for British residents in Italy after Brexit. It is apparently not obligatory but there's a ton of things that you can't do without it, so in a way it is obligatory. Um, and I applied for this um, back in March and it's now time for me to pick it up. Um, I've just arrived and I've got a ticket 
I'm number 99. They've just called number 36. So I think I'm going to be sitting here for a while. Mentre Niki sta esplicitando le sue cose alla questura a uh, prendere il suo permesso per rimanere in Italia, io sto facendo una passeggiata per le strade di Salerno. Questa è la zona più vecchia di Salerno. Adesso vi faccio vedere. Ecco qua, questi sono i vicoli di Salerno, dove possiamo vedere che più o meno non è molto diverso da Positano per quanto riguarda i piccoli shop o le piccole stradine. Ovviamente i palazzi sono molto più grandi e alti. È chiaro che questa doveva essere una chiesa. Adesso è chiusa o almeno sembra chiusa. È confermato, questo è il centro storico di Salerno, quindi la parte più vecchia. È abbastanza diversa da Napoli. Ovviamente Salerno è una città più piccola. Molti negozi sono chiusi, si vede. Non so se è l'orario o la colpa del Covid. Questa è una delle piccole piazzette che si trovano a Salerno, almeno in questa zona. Ne ho incontrate già 5-6 o anche di più. È un gruppo di anziani che stavano probabilmente giocando a carte. Ecco qua, qua abbiamo qualcosa che a Positano c'era una volta e non c'è più, un calzolaio. C'è uno di quei mestieri antichi che non esistono più, che fanno la riparazione delle scarpe. Scarpe di una volta, quelle di cuoio, non quelle di plastica, che ovviamente non si possono aggiustare. No, mai avuto un paio di scarpe così. All these people that you can see behind me are sitting and waiting as well with this document when i leave italy when i go back to england for example when i come back into italy um it should um mean that i can come back into the country and stay whereas if i don't have this card with me they are likely to stamp my passport and that means that after 90 days i have to leave even though i'm resident here and i pay tax here and i have a family here without this document I'm not allowed to stay, so um, hoping that they'll call my number at some point. We're up to the 50s now. No, I'm a Another thing that has happened this week is that for the last three afternoons there have been severe thunderstorms. We're not quite sure what's happening with the weather here, but there's supposed to be another one due this afternoon. It's very strange. Really, really violent, heavy thunderstorms with cracks of thunder and lightning and torrential rain. Uh, feels like the world is ending. But then again, it's beautiful the next morning. So we'll see this afternoon. I haven't managed to film any of them apart from yesterday because yesterday we drove to Rome to pick up Sky, and while we were on our way, the heavens opened. It was one of the heaviest rainstorms that I've ever driven in. It seems like the apocalypse is about to happen. It's very, very stormy. <laughs> it was lightning. We are sitting in the boot of our car having lunch. <laughs> so glamorous. Uh, we're in the service station on the motorway that we were in with Lucio a few weeks ago when we went to Umbria. Sì, è lo stesso bro. Sì, è lo stesso. And it's a thunderstorm. It's thundering and lightning and raining all around us. We're just having a quick lunch. We're on our way to the airport at Rome to pick up Sky because there's still no flights to Naples. Well, there are, but not today. So she's flying today and today she's flying to Rome. Questo Covid è davvero rotto le palle, anche con i voli, tutto, non lo so. It's a three and a half hour drive to the airport at Rome just to pick up Sky. So we are also picking up some bagels because our friends Linda and Steve from the Beehive Hostel in Rome make fresh bagels every week and deliver them all around Italy. And I decided that I would order some and pick them up while we happen to be in the area. So we're doing that first.
We are eating a rice salad, which I made and stuck in a Tupperware box. All the yummy bits have gone, but there was olives, tomatoes, cheese, rocket, and a little bit of tuna and mayonnaise in there. Very yummy. We're having really amazing weather for mid-June for mid in Italy. Look at this. Sì, il tempo perfetto per guidare sull'autostrada. Sky's flight came in slightly early, so we had to divert to the airport and pick her up first. And now we're headed into the centre of Rome to pick up the bagels at Beehive. Uh, apparently there's nobody there anymore, so we're going to have to do a little bit of magic to get hold of these bagels. Okay, I'm inside the beehive. Here's the bagels. One bag for Elizabeth and two bags for me. Right, let's get these and get out of here. Right, just want to show you where I am. This is the Beehive. It is literally two blocks from Termini Station. It is a beautiful little hostel to come and stay at. Really, really handy for the centre of Rome. They've got this lovely little garden area here, which is normally full of tables and chairs. Anyhow, let me get these bagels and get out of here. Yep, that definitely shut. You see, look, there's Termini Station is right there. That's how close we are. Yum, yum. Well, we won't starve, that's for sure. Many more here. <laughs> So that was our week. I was knocked out for three days of it, but the rest of it was pretty busy. And we've got quite a few things happening next week as well. The 15th of June is a public holiday in Positano. It's San Vito, which is the patron saint of Positano. So there's usually a few things happening down on the beach. Um, there will be a video on Wednesday this week. I've got a little one lined up for you there. And what else do I want to say? I'm going to finish off this video just taking you around the rest of the garden, showing you a bit more, a few more things that are growing. This is the rose bush that I bought a few months ago and it has sprung up. It's got very, very tall actually. And the roses smell absolutely beautiful, but they're just past their best now. Hopefully they will flower again later on this year. There are some fabulous apricots growing on this tree. They're still very yellow though. haven't been in here for quite a while. <laughs> it's definitely changed from last time I was here. Do we have any tomatoes yet? There are some Nespola ripening on the tree up there. They look a bit yellow still, but Lucas said he's eaten some already. Let's go up and have a look. Yeah, they're still a bit yellow.
I will see you on Wednesday. If not, I will see you next Sunday. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you all have a lovely week. Bye.